I am Geoffrey of Illardoen, and this is part three of the Kingdom of Sweden campaign. It is July of 1622 when the Battle of Host took place. Christian of Brunswick led a Protestant army into battle against Count Tilly at the head of the Catholic lead, supported by Cordoba at the head of the Spanish army. He was defeated soundly. The Principality of Transylvania has gone to war against Bohemia, while at the same time Bavaria has made the Duchy of Pyroid their vassal. Johann Banner attacks a rebel army outside Königsberg. He attacks at night. And a somewhat chaotic battle ensued, in which both sides had mercenaries of a similar kind. Both sides had Junkers. The Swedes had Protestant Junkers. And these are the Protestant Junkers caught in a duel with the Catholic cavalry. There's another unit of fighters in the background, and the Catholic perishers are approaching our lines. Here on the left and in the center are the Swedes in a Swedish formation looking more organized and more continuous. The Catholic Junkers are caught in melee with the Protestant pikemen. Our army had a few grenadiers who are here making their presence felt. These are our Protestant Junkers attacking some renegades who are fighting on the Catholic side. Here is the enemy general, engaged with some of our pikemen for a reason he knows best. And in the background, some Catholic Junkers wearing musket proof armor. Musket shot just bounces off them. Here are some dismounted goat landers yielding their gigantic swords. A push of pike between our pikemen and their pikemen. As in the background, our grenadiers are causing quite a bit of trouble. Pummeled by grenades, one enemy unit is routed. Having won the cavalry fight on our left wing, our Junkers charge the enemy rear. Spreading panic, causing havoc, making our enemy run. The enemy general persists in his fight against our pikemen. He's lost much of his bodyguard. Some enemy Junkers come to his aid. Our mercenary pikemen defend themselves stoutly and valiantly. There was blood and death. Many were maimed of arms and legs and freed of lives. The enemy Junkers are losing the duel against our 
pikemen eventually they decide to retreat and reform leaving their general on his own how many reform the enemy Junkers charge a group of musketeers The charge was unsuccessful. You have to imagine that the musketeers, in cases such as these, would not be standing out in the open, but rather behind hedges, hedgerows, and the walls. Another push of pikes as our Junkers hammer the enemy in their rear. Surrounded, the enemy pikemen fight to the death. Another group of enemy pikemen routed. Only a few enemy units still remain on the battlefield, broken up in small groups. Here are Junkers charge another one of those tons of pikes in the rear and break them. The battle has been practically won. Johann Banner here charges a group of enemy dragoons and puts them to flight. Our enemy is now in full retreat. These are our Protestant Junkers chasing the routed enemy. Our enemy has been utterly vanquished, and our valorous general Jochen Banner gains even more well-deserved honor and renown. This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. Large open battles are always costly. In this case, there were 1,300 lost, about 2,000 slain and about 400 taken prisoner. Our Junkers accomplished themselves highly, killing about 300 of the enemy. The ost Preussen pikemen killed about 140, and our Dragoons about 300 or so. Back to the campaign map. Baden have taken Kempton, meeting up with the Swiss on the other side of the border. The Austrians and the Catholic League are leading the rankings. Protestant Union 3rd, Bavaria 4th, while Sweden is 10th overall, and in game turn 57, 7th overall. And the first faction is destroyed. In the campaign, the Bohemian Estates were destroyed when the Imperialists took Igalau. Gabo, Bethlehem's Transylvanians are remaining a thorn on the side of the Austrians. Sweden is making 22,000 gold per turn. Dante is being turned into a cannon production center. The Kingdom of Sweden is now 8th overall. Our war council makes Marienburg our next campaign target. 
the Duchy of Brunswick and the Protestant Union finally cease hostilities and Sweden is sixth overall. The Turks make yet another incursion into Austria. Danzig gets a high level barracks and L being a merchant bank. Income has jumped out to 22,500 golden. A Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth Army besieges Königsberg. It is being defended by Maximilian of Erpach. Johann Bonner comes to his aid. The two generals are slightly outnumbered, but certainly not outgunned. Johann Bonner arrives with his reinforcements. Maximilian of Erpach has placed his musketeers and grenadiers on the walls and the Poles are making a fine target. Here is the Polish cavalry attacking the force under Johann Bonner. The enemy stopped and turned away. Grenadiers are sent to the bastion nearest the force under Johann Bernier and begin to harass the enemy with grenades. But the Polish army seems oblivious of the threat and they march to confront Johann Bernier in a pitched battle. Pikemen hold their ground for the Swedes, and the Polish commander, Captain Philip, is slain. The Polish cavalry abandon the field, giving their place to the Polish infantry to take on Johann Bonner. The Polish infantry are cut down by the musket shot coming from the Swedish lines. And the Swedish pikemen go on the offensive. In between a rock and a hard place, the enemy units are running around in confusion. Here, the pikemen march forward as the musketeers are running back, shattered. Eventually, the pikemen also run back through that same gauntlet. With the loss of their general, the Polish units, torn by hesitation, run forward and back 
all the time underneath that bastion where our grenadiers are placed. The cannonade from the star fort adds to the peril the police infantry faces. At long last, the Polish attack disintegrates into random initiatives by individual units. has practically failed. These pikemen do not seem to want to accept that, so they march forward. Surely no one can blame this man for lack of courage. Alas, death is fatal unto all, both the feeble and the courageous. Hit by grenades, these pikemen had it, and they're going home. Oblivious of those that went before them and never came back, these turncoats decide to run the same gauntlet. Having witnessed firsthand the futility of that endeavor, the turncoats turn back and head home.
Another victory under the moonlight for our glorious general Johann Vanea and for Maximilian of Ebb. All of Christendom will be awed by the victory we have won here today. The musketeers, firing from the walls, had about 300 kills per company and the grenadiers about 200 per unit. And this perhaps is why muskets came to replace pikes on the battlefield. So back to the campaign map, a mission is issued by a war council to besiege Frauenburg. Sweden is now militarily fifth overall. The Transylvanians remain a useful thorn on the side of the imperialists in addition to providing a little bit of a financial support for our campaign. Johann Alois Salvius lay seeds on Marienburg. There seem to be never-ending tensions between the Protestant factions. The Duchy of Prussia Brandenburg goes to war with the Kingdom of Denmark Norway, as the Kingdom of Sweden rises to fourth overall militarily, with 23,000 golden per month. Gustav Adolf the Conqueror marches to Marienburg and attacks a Polish army under Johann Reinhold Forster outside the city at night. One of the enemy generals, Roman Becker, is slain. Our victory was a costly one. Open pit battles tend to be bloody. In this one we lost 800 men, while our enemy lost twice as many and we also took some prisoners. Our king offered the prisoners up for ransom, but the uh, offer was rejected. The AI won't lose an opportunity to give our leader a bad reputation. Our glorious leader is a proven commander, indeed, and he has maxed out on his command rating. Wasting no time, Gustav Adolf attacks another Polish army outside Marienburg under Captain Dubromysl. It is a rainy day in the May of 1623. And here is Gustavus, our great leader. Here are Hakabusias are harassing some enemy dragoons. Having won the contest, the Hakabusias discharge their guns and run through them with swords. The enemy captain, Captain Dobromysl, is slain along with General Forster. Our cavalry collects as many prisoners as possible to prevent the fleeing units from uniting with the garrison of Marienburg. Gustav Adolf joins in this sport. This tend to be an easy victory. The enemy being commanded by a mere captain. The battle was won with a loss of only 137 men.
Marienburg has already been under siege by Johann Adler Salvius, one of our generals. Gustav Adolf joins him, and the two of them together take the city. The city is easily won. Johann Adler Salvius bangs a few heads and makes a quick profit from the looting. Gustav Adolf chases off some enemy uh, scouts. The Imperial Archduchy of Austria tops the uh, rankings, followed by the Catholic League. Untouched as they are, both of them, by the Swedish onslaught in the north. The Ottomans have made another incursion into the Empire, besieging Karlstad, and we will close the campaign with the Transylvanians still out and about in Bohemia. Thank you for watching. See you in part 4.